and today I'm going to talk about how I stopped doing compulsions. I'm going to talk about what my compulsions were, the journey I went through with trying to stop them and failing and then eventually how I got to arrive at a place where I no longer do compulsions. So my main biggest compulsion when I suffered really badly with OCD was avoidance. And avoidance is a really tricky one because it can be really easy to pretend to ourselves that it isn't a compulsion and we can be making excuses with ourselves. So I would lie to myself for years. I would be sort of like, oh, I don't really feel up to going for dinner with everyone tonight or going out with the family for a day out because I've had such a busy week. I just want to rest. And what I would do is just like watch Netflix all weekend and and sleep and I would get you know drunk on Friday so that I could be hung over and sleep all day Saturday and it was a legitimate excuse because that's what people do so I was able to get away for it get away with it for years you know when it came to talking to family and friends about why I wasn't doing things or why I wouldn't go on that holiday or do this or do that and I think the biggest thing for me was the day that I decided to recognize I am lying to myself and stop making excuses to myself because it was only me that I was putting out by carrying on compulsions. You know, it, it once you come to terms with the fact that it's not doing bad to anybody else but, but yourself, that's a really good step to get to. So even when I was in recovery and I was still sneakily doing a bit of avoidance, I think making peace with the fact that it, it is damaging and it makes you worse um, is something that I came to terms with and it took a while and it was very painful actually because it's kind of, it, with OCD, compulsions are our comfort blanket and giving them up is, is so difficult. So when it came to avoidance, I had to get to a place in my recovery where I no longer cared how bad it felt to be in an anxiety anxiety inducing situation. It became more of an uncomfortable feeling to avoid than it was to actually be triggered. And the more that you expose yourself to the situations that are triggering, the more that shift starts to happen. So at the start, the avoidance is really comfortable or the compulsion makes you feel really comfortable, whatever it is that you're doing, whether that's checking the locks multiple times or ruminating about something that you're worried about or cleaning your hands repeatedly, that feels really comfortable and not doing it feels extremely uncomfortable because you're exposed to it. But the more that you don't engage in the compulsion, this is what I found, as the anxiety starts to reduce, this starts to become a less appealing feeling. So the feeling of avoidance becomes, became for me, really icky, almost as icky as not doing a compulsion because I was really aware of the fact that I was not doing myself any favors and I knew that it was very bad for my OCD. So I had to get to a place where I was absolutely fed up of living with OCD ruling my life in order to come to the realization with myself that compulsions had to go. You know, I I think I was reflecting on the fact that OCD had taken a good 15 years of my life and at the time, and I don't look at it like that now. I look at the 15 years spent as incredible character building, unbelievable suffering that I just can't believe anyone I can't believe a brain allows you to endure that level of suffering <clears throat> and for it to be invisible too. That's what's just blows my mind now, now that I don't live in that state of anxiety and, and chronic guilt and constantly triggered. I can't really believe that I did live like that now that it's lifted. Um, so I think reflecting on that, it had to get to a point where I was just, I'm not doing this. And there was a bit of anger there. It was a bit of an angry, motivated, I'm, I'm not having this anymore, um, grit and determination feeling. Um, a lot of tears, a lot of crying my eyes out because I couldn't, I couldn't face the exposures I needed to do and I was just so exhausted from it. But it got to a place where my determination to overcome it was far greater than my fear 
to do it. And I think because at the time I had a few role models to look up to who were where I wanted to get to. For example, Rob, who runs OCD Recovery, and um, Erica, someone I was really well connected with at the time as well, who was brilliant. She, she had gone through the journey that I would sub subsequently go on. And so seeing those people give me, you know, keep going, don't give up, even when I really wanted to, it was like a goal to be like, I'm not doing this. And just seeing these happy, healthy people getting on with life, um, no longer, you know, not, I don't want to say moaning about OCD because that's a horrible thing to say, but I, I wasn't moaning about it. I was just feeling so down on myself and I couldn't see any way of it getting better. So to see people who were like, hey, come over here, this is how it is, you know, it's great, keep going, um, it gave me that determination to go, do you know what, it does look like it pays off. And there were three or four times during the 18 months, two year, really intensive work that I did that I just wanted to give up. And I remember just like bawling my eyes out, like there's no point, this is so terrifying, I'm not getting anywhere. So lots of different ups and downs. And I think one other thing I wanted to say about giving in, giving up compulsions is if you've been following this account, OCD Recovery, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, and you've been learning about the unconditional self-acceptance, one sneaky little thing I did is I got so into that and reading the books and learning about unconditional self-acceptance that I kind of excused myself in a way from exposures and I would fall back into doing compulsions because in a way not doing exposures that you knew, know you need to do is a compulsion because it's a form of avoidance so if the if the if the homework you've set yourself is okay i'm going to do an exposure i'm going to bath my kids every night this week or i'm going to not wash my hands more than however many times in the day i don't know how it works with contamination um, or I'm not going to nitpick at my partner with ROCD or whatever it may be, or I'm going to ruminate far less. Um, it becomes really easy to not do those things out in, a, in, a, in a sense it's avoidance because you're just so scared to do them that it's a compulsion not to do them. You're avoiding those scenarios that have to be done. Um, so. I, I would advise to try to do the unconditional self and life acceptance work and all the rational thinking work alongside the cutting out compulsions and not forgetting about the importance of exposures and not doing compulsions when you're facing your exposures. So essentially that is what you do with an exposure. You do the scary thing, do the thing, and then let the feelings in and do not perform compulsions to reduce the anxiety. So this is how we do exposures. And I, yeah, I definitely tried to go intellectual those years. Like, right, I'm going to learn my way to recovery. Um, and I'd ask questions like, do I still need to do exposures? And it's like, the answer to that question is, if you're asking it, you probably do. Because if something is still scaring you, OCD is still going to latch. So if you're frightened of an exposure, you're going to need to do it more. And I do see exposures and compulsions as extremely linked because I got to a place where I was able to cut out compulsions from life. But when it came to doing exposures where you're actually on purpose triggering the OCD to raise it up so that you can become more comfortable with it, that's where the work is, is not doing the compulsions in, in response to it. So I'm just trying to cast my mind back to the depths of doing scary exposures and not doing compulsions. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. And the way that one of the girls that was helping me at the time in a sort of peer support capacity would say, is, you know, you've got to jump into the fire. You've got to just jump off the cliff. You've got to jump. Um, and obviously, not from a suicide OCD point of view, I know that might sound quite terrifying, metaphorically I mean. She was very matter of fact, very frank about it all, really took out the ruminating, she didn't want to talk about OCD in the theme, she was just saying, do you know what, you need to get on with it, just get on with it, whatever it hurls at you, just keep going. So I think I made a conscious decision with compulsions, no matter how scary it is, 
no matter what emotion and what thought and what feeling is thrown at me, I'm just going to do it and I'm just, I give up because I'm not living like this anymore. What's worse, you know, being scared and triggered or living perpetually stuck with OCD for the rest of my life. And I think that's where we need to get to, that's where I needed to get to in my own recovery journey, was that unwillingness to settle for a life that was so unbelievably boxing. You know, now that I'm on the other side and the world has opened up, there's no end to what I want to do now. Because, you know, I used to be scared to walk around the block in case I saw a trigger. So that would be scary for me a few years ago. But I've said this before, once you can walk around the block because you're not scared of a trigger, you can visit anywhere in the world and the whole world opens up and all the things you were scared of are actually exciting. And I, I think when it comes to cutting out compulsions, if you can keep that in your mind of where do you want your life to be? I used to say to people, oh, I'm a home bird. I just like being home, you know, I like my creature comforts and that's like, for anyone who knows me well, that couldn't be more opposite to who I am. I'm very outgoing as a person, I like to be social, I like to experience new things and, and go new places and see cool things I've never seen before. But because of my fears, my brain had convinced me that I didn't like any of those things, but deep down, I desperately wanted to go and do cool things. You know, even for simple as like wanting to go to art galleries, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to. And now I'm desperate to do those things again when I get time. So this is, I think this is one of the biggest areas of compulsions is the how well the brain will lie to us to keep us locked into compulsions. That's my biggest message today because I had a bit of a realization earlier on that I was lying to myself for a long time. And it's easy to see why, because who wants to feel terrified all the time? You know, like we, we can beat ourselves up all we want, but it's a horrendous feeling. Like now that I don't suffer chronically with OCD, there's, and, I, and my issues in life and what I would consider to be normal issues Every now and then I have to pinch myself and go, this is just absolutely nowhere near the level of suffering that I experienced with OCD. And so when, and I don't know if you feel this way, but I used to misjudge myself as a weak person because people around me would be like, what's the matter with you? Don't be so daft, you know, there's nothing to be scared of. But I used to look at other people and think you're so much stronger than me and stuff like that. But now, I realise how unbelievably strong you have to be to endure OCD every day. Um, and I look back and I just see an extremely strong person for having gone through that day in, day out. And even when I did give up, because I did give up at times, I'd be in bed all weekend and, and not do things. That was still strong. Just being awake felt strong at times. So I want you to take it out of the equation if, if this is how you feel, because I did. I want you to take out of the equation this idea that you might be weak for having a mental illness and reposition it as just unbelievable strength to face it every day. And that gave me some power to fight it because rather than seeing myself as a weak person because I was beaten down by a mental illness, I saw myself as a strong person for enduring it. I was like, whoa, if you've endured this for 15 years, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to, you know, suffer at the hands of some exposures and not engaging in compulsions. Another area of compulsions that I found really difficult to stop was rumination, because ruminating, how I see it, is just thinking. And in life, we ruminate, you know, like now that I don't suffer with OCD, I will sit there and I'm like, you know, you're drifting off, aren't you? Thinking about what you're gonna have for dinner. You, you're sorting out multiple problems at one time. And is that ruminating? So when you're in the OCD cycle, it's hard to even recognize, is this rumination or is this just my brain doing its thing? And I used to get really hung up on like, do I leave it alone? Do I? And I, the biggest thing I would say to you is 
the going with uncertainty with that one. So trying to work out if it's rumination is essentially rumination. So I would call it like the circuit breaker. So as often as I, as I was able to, I would just recognise and acknowledge that's rumination. I'm not engaging with that and just get on with my day. So whatever your normal daily plan would be, do it. And as best as you can, don't engage with your thoughts. If you notice them engaging, bring them back, carry on with your day. And we don't want to be compulsively not like not like becoming fixated on not ruminating, but letting it be there until the work has been done that loosens and shifts the beliefs. Because my ruminating didn't stop until I'd started to make peace with the sort of unconditional self and life acceptance stuff. And I'd been working on my irrational beliefs. Um, so rumination and avoidance were my biggest ones. What other compulsions are there? I didn't really have outward compulsions. Um, just reflecting on my friends who would, um, I imagine contamination OCD to be extremely challenging. Um, but again, it's the same, applying the same principle of recognising that we're lying to ourselves and that or I recognise I was lying to myself. I don't want to put words into your mouth. Um, recognising that it is keeping you stuck while working on the irrational belief of, okay, it's terrible if I pick up something on my hands. Um, actually, I do have experience with this. Um, I used to get really similar to contamination, but I would get extremely worried about food poisoning and raw food or if food was gone off. So things like if it was the um, ex expiration date of uh, like a ready meal, I would throw it away on the expiration date because I wouldn't know if it was like the morning that it goes off or the evening it goes off because sometimes there's like a time underneath and anyone who's got OCD would probably have noticed these things that no one else would notice. Um, I used to look at the time on the bottom and I'd be like, is that when it was manufactured or is that the time? Like 1.53 p.m. today is when it rots and it's two o'clock is that a different time zone and I would obsess about that but the fear was what if I get sick what if I get a stomach bug and I'm ill and the OCD takes over and my defenses are down and I'm weak so for me it wasn't making peace with being sick I don't want to be sick I don't want to be ill it was just recognizing that it's really not that bad if I'm ill you know it would pass it wouldn't be great. I definitely, definitely don't want it. But loads of people have been sick before. So that's what slowly over time disarmed the OCD. And so then the fear was reduced. And the compulsion, the, the, the desire and the pull to ruminate starts to go because you don't ruminate about things that you're not scared of. Like, I'm not ruminating right now about what, I don't know, good example. I'm not ruminating right now about when my car battery's gonna die because it's mostly, it's like three quarters of the way full. And even if it does die, like, I don't really care. I'm in my local town. I'm not ruminating about, I'm not thinking about it. I'm not obsessing about how much acceleration I use in my car. I'm just aware of it at some point. The battery's going to run out. You don't want to let it die because then you're going to be trapped somewhere. Who cares? I ring my husband. He picks me up. He tells me off. Done. So can you see how rumination, the way to cut out that compulsion at its core, is through reducing the fear response to the OCD cycle? And I just want to be really clear about how that operates in my brain in terms of reducing the fear. I do not use unconditional self and life acceptance as a compulsion, which I did for a while. That wasn't recovery. That's where a scary thought comes in and you reassure yourself using, oh, I could be at peace with this because X, Y, Z. No, my beliefs have shifted because I've worked on my overarching life philosophy, belief systems. And I don't work on those perspectives anymore. They have shifted. You know, it's like when you learn 
to be a kinder person. You just are a kinder person by the end. You don't have to practice it anymore. Or if you've learned a new skill, like you've learned how to add a blog to a website, you don't each time have to consciously read the instructions. You just do it because you've learned it. So that's something really big I would say if you're on your journey to making peace with your really scary situations that are fueling your OCD cycle. And obviously not directly about compulsions, but just remember you are not aiming to be happy with your fears. You're aiming to have the same response to your fears as a person without OCD has. Something that when they think about it, they go, oh, I wouldn't want that. Let me know that's not true. And then they get on with their day and it doesn't affect them anymore. So they have an intrusive thought like everyone does and it just doesn't latch to anything because they're not scared of it because they have a rational view of it. So this is what we're aiming for. The reason we have to do this work is because we do have OCD and the people who respond normally, I hate the word normal, the people who respond normally to the feared scenarios don't have to do that work because they don't have OCD. So I found that the combination of cutting out compulsions altogether, cold turkey, seeing it as a drug that you're addicted to, I was addicted to it for avoidance, I was addicted to for 10 years and seeing it as a harmful drug, not a harmful drug in the sense of it's damaging my body if I ever do it and if I, if I avoid this is really dangerous, that's obviously obsessive too, but more in the sense of long term, this is not a practice that if I engage in it is going to be healthy for me and seeing it like that and being really honest with yourself. And if you're interacting with fellow OCD sufferers, really taking it seriously that providing reassurance to them is not helping them. It can feel really cruel to go, hey, do you know what? That sounds like reassurance and I'm not going to answer it because it's not going to help you. You may get stick. You may have people who don't like that, who want it, who think, oh, that's rude and don't want to face the OCD. And that's OK. They're on their own journey. But recognizing that it is not going to help you to receive or give reassurance <clears throat> reassurance being a, asking for reassurance being a big compulsion that's another big step <clears throat> i really need a drink right now <laughs> so that's my advice for today time to stop and have a drink and if you have any questions about compulsions comment in the comments box and i'd be happy to do another video to answer those questions at some point and best of luck to you thanks bye